It's May 9th here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest and my beautiful wife and I are going to start off our hiking season with a nice light hike up to Lena Lakes. We're going to try out some of our new hiking gear, break in some of our boots and uh, and get ready for the season. It's uh, it's a good way to start off your season, uh, just take a couple good, good hikes. Uh, Lena Lakes is only three miles one way according to the map. We're going to test that out with our iPhones and see if it is actually three miles and uh, it's just a it's just a nice little spot that we like to go every year up on the Hood Canal, up a little ways past that. Um, but um, we're just starting out. Thought we'd videotape the thing so that you could kind of see if anybody who's interested in doing the hike. So uh, we'll shut this thing off and get up to the trailhead and uh, start our recording right there. So here we are at the parking lot. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot of people today. <laughs> it's roughly one o'clock. It's about 75 degrees. Saturday, May 9th, and uh, we're getting ready to uh, head over to the trailhead. So the trail starts off fairly flat, but it isn't long before you hit the switchbacks. It's always nice getting out on the early spring and getting your first hike in and uh, looking forward to what's coming in the summertime. Washington is so beautiful and in the springtime everything is so green and, and uh, lush and uh, it just gets me all excited ready to go hiking later on in the year. It's one thing I like about the Olympics it's you're never really ever far from water. So we, we bring the water bottles, we're trying out these new water bottles that have the filters built in inside them. So all we do is fill up at the stream and screw the lid on and when you squeeze the bottle, the water comes out. We used to have the old pump kind of water filtration system and we took both of them last year on a, a hike through the Enchanted Valley, which we're going to record this year. and. Uh, you know, we found ourselves using the water bottles more than the pump. I like the pump a lot, but it's one I used for years. But the water bottles were, just seemed to be so much faster and easier. So it's kind of, I think, I don't know that I'm ready to get rid of the water bottles or the pump yet, but I'll probably take both again. I always like to have a backup system just in case. So we finished our very first set of uh, switchbacks and we're taking a small break right here and enjoying the view. So my wife Jennifer likes to use the uh, walking sticks. They kind of look like ski skiing poles, but she got them from Costco. They're uh, they weren't very expensive, but she says that they help her out a lot, stay steady, especially in 
in uh, wet and slippery situations or when we have to cross a, a ford, a stream, or a river, they seem to help out a lot. And uh, she really likes them. So we're about a half hour into the trail and still somewhere on the switchbacks, taking our second or third break. Jennifer's going to impart some of her wisdom about trees to us. Well, my daddy is a timber faller, so he's the one that taught me all this stuff. And we were sitting here talking about the different kinds of trees here. There's cedar trees, which have the wide, flat um, branches and needles. And then you have Douglas fir that have round needles. And if you look at the needles themselves, they're round all the way around. Where if you look at a hemlock, the needles look just like a fir tree, except that they're flat instead of round. So you actually have to look at the needles and the tops to tell the difference. Hmm, interesting. Moving on. There's always an interesting spot in the trail. It's a little spot where you mid switch back, but over the edge, there's a, you can hear it down there, there's a waterfalls where the water's rushing really fast, but you never can catch a good view of it. It's just too steep and you can't see it through the trees. Once you get in off these switchbacks and kind of on the top, it, the hiking gets to be a, a little less uh, monotonous and kind of a lot more fun. So we're uh, a little shy of two miles now, and pretty much done with the switchbacks. We're about an hour in. It takes us a little longer to hike because we're spending a lot more time recording and taking pictures. The trail is fairly crowded. I've been hiking uh, in the Olympics since the early 80s and there's one thing I've noticed over the years is hiking's gained in popularity an immense amount. It seems like there's not as many places you can go that don't have a, a lot of people in them. You have to go farther and farther into the Olympics and even some of the trails that I used to feel really isolated and secluded and I really liked that feeling of hiking is that feeling of being alone like you're the only person in the world. Even some of those trails are farther you get in the, there's still a lot of people and hey we're getting to the favorite spot in the trail where we come down to the big mossy rocks and we usually sit down and have a bite to eat. Should be just over the hill. So about two miles in, there's this nice little dry river bed that's kind of a good spot to take a break. Mmm. <laughs> the snack of champions. I think that we're probably, uh, let's see, we're two, so we're, we're about a mile from where we're supposed to, uh, our end goal. So, we're going to eat some apples and uh, take a, advantage of the shade. It's about, I don't know, what do you think? 75 five degrees out so it's it's still really comfortable out here two and a quarter miles you hit that kind of a neat little bridge you built back there and you hit a small series of after the bridge you hit a small series of switchbacks before you get the uh, straight away pretty much to the lake this looks like a nice spot this one you can't Nice little spot where the river goes down below. Here, just can't see it. That was a nice little flat spot. Trail, we need people take pictures down there. We 
just hit this spot where the there's breeze whistling through here and it feels really good uh, keeping us cool and hit us at the just the right time. You know, I've hiked in a lot of states. I've hiked in Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Hawaii, Hawaii, yes. And uh, it never ceases to amaze me when I hike in Washington how large, how dense the forest can get. The trees are just, you know, fairly large trees. And every once in a while you see one that sticks out, stands above all the rest, and just amazes me how how these trees can get so big and so old. <clears throat> I feel really blessed to live here in the Pacific Northwest. These kind of hikes remind me of that. Getting close. Look at a huge rock with a cave underneath it. It's been a pretty dry year this year. There's not been a lot of rain or snowpack, so the Olympics are pretty dry. A lot of the little streams that you normally come across for water have uh, dried up, not, not, not around right now. I think that uh, as the year goes on, because this is May, as the summer goes on, they'll start banning fires and the fire warnings will go up, even in the uh, park. Here's an example of hemlock. The branch has the needles that look like fir trees, but they're only on one side. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they don't go all the way around. They're flat. Hmm. See right here, instead of going all the way around, they only go halfway. That one's a cedar tree. See how it's kind of flat and wide, the leaves or the needles? Instead of being needles, it's kind of got a flat, wide branch. Huh. Oh, wow. stopping at this little overlook and we're going to have lunch and then we're going to work our way back down. I hope you've enjoyed the video.
video.